the rest they would say is history. You see, I believe, as I'm sure you do, and you can see that when you, when you make that first bold move in the direction of your dreams, that things will start aligning, that things will start aligning for you, that somehow the universe, God, etc., will make it work because there is something that comes from believing and from making that first move. And that's our story. And so I'm not telling you to leave what you're doing now and go get yourself fired just so you could start living your dream and walking in your passion. That's not what I'm telling you to do. And I'm not telling you to leave your job today and go start living your passion and your purpose. But there are some things that I believe you can do almost immediately if you're going to start walking in your passion and in your purpose. The first thing I believe is that you want to do what you love. What do you love to do? Finding your passion is as simple as finding the things you love to do. And if you trace back in your life, you will find that these are things that you've always been doing. What are those things that you've always been doing? The things that gets you excited about doing them. The reason why we miss this sometimes is because we think it has to be something grand. Everybody wants to be like Mike. Everybody wants to be a doctor. Everybody wants to be a liar. The thing that you love doing, the thing that motivates and inspire you, the thing that you would spend hours investing your time in, the thing you talk about nonstop, those are the things that you love doing. And it is in your gifting, the things you do well, that you will find that passion and eventually your purpose. What is it that you like doing? I want to share with you what Steve Harvey has to say about this. And you will find that in your passion, is your purpose. And it can be little things. It can be the little things, but it's the way you know that that is your gift and that is your passion. Let's listen to this short clip about finding your passion and walking in your purpose. Your gift will make room for you. Now, what is your gift? It's the thing that you do the absolute best with the least amount of effort. That's your gift. Quit running away from the gift. Your gift will make room for you. Stop trying to be something you ain't gifted at. Nobody asked you to go down here and study to be a dentist, and you ain't really good at that. Quit going down to the church trying to sing. You can't sing. <laughs> now, just because they let you sing at the church, you're not finna, ain't nobody else finna go with this. Because, you know, come as you are. The Lord loveth the cheerful, give all that. We don't apply scriptures out here. You come to the Apollo and you can't sing, we got something for your ass up there. <laughs> Period. Listen to me. All of you have this gift. Identify it. It's the thing that you do the absolute best with the least amount of effort. That's what you should be doing. You're wasting your time pursuing your passion. The Bible does not mention passion. It mentions your gift. What are you gifted at and do that? Stop tripping. You can do that. If you fry chicken better than everybody you know, you ought to be somewhere frying chicken. People make millions of dollars frying chicken. Popeyes, Kentucky Fried Chicken, El Pollo Loco. All they doing is making chicken. They just found a way to do it. Somebody just started making chicken. You know the story of Marie Callender's? Do you know what this woman did, man? She worked for a diner, a greasy spoon diner that was going out of business. It was her only job. She was a single mother. It was her only job. She needed that.
that job, but the diner was going to close. So she went to the owner of the diner and said, let me bake one of my pies. People like my pies and see if I can help you make a little money. He said, whatever, bring it in. He, she bought one pie in. They sold every slice. The next day, the people came in and asked for the pie. She had to go home and make another pie. The next day, so many people asked for the pie, she had to make four pies. Then people start saying, can I buy my own pie? She made so many pies at this store that she says, you are the Lord loveth a cheerful giver, all that. We needed that job, but the diner was going to close. So she went to the owner of and make another pie. The next day, so many people asked for the pie, she had to make four pies. Then people start saying, can I buy my own pie? She made so many pies at this store that she eventually saved her money and put a commercial oven in her house. Now, all she done made so many pies, the dude's shop, he ain't selling hamburgers no more. <laughs> all he's selling is them damn pies. That's how Marie Callender got started. Marie Callender now has over 120 restaurants. You can't go to no frozen food section without seeing Marie Callender in there. You know what she started with? A pie. One It's possible. Your gift it's will make room for you. It's very possible that you are missing your gift and your purpose because you believe that your passion is just a hobby. But if you really look back, I like to ask the question, who is your favorite barber or hairdresser? Or who is the person you go to for cakes on special occasions? And you will find if you talk to them and ask them, how did you get started? You would be surprised that they will tell you, you know, I used to mess around in my little brother's hair and, you know, or my sister, I used to hook her up on Sundays with, with her perm. That's how they started. But we're looking at the finished product. We're not looking at where they started. We don't know their story. But all they use to become who they are right now is their passion, their gift. That is what they love to do. And they decided to make a living doing that? Is that something you can be doing on the side? If you speak to most of the people who tell you that they are baking, the other day I was trying to order a cake for a special occasion and I sent the picture and I said, how much is this one? And she said, $160. I said, a hundred and who? Because that's fine. That's what she is her passion. That is her purpose. That is why, what she is doing, what she loves. Where did she start? In her house, baking cake from scratch for members of the family, etc. And it's that's how you find. Ask yourself, what are those things that I've been doing? And remember to use the chat, drop your chat. If there's a thought you want to share, an idea, feel free to use uh, the chat. Most of the time, we limit ourselves because we compare our dreams to others. We feel like we are not adequate. We're, oh, I'm just a little, what do you do? I own a little panade shop. I have a little salon. So there's, there's nothing little about your dream. There's nothing little about your vision. I do not say I have a little office in my home. I am, we are the Belize Institute for Service Excellence, Leadership and Research. That's who we are. And if you think little, then that's who you will become. Dream big. Don't compare yourself to others. Steve Jobs says that if you do what you love, you will never work another day in your life. And some people run away with that. I say you will work every single day of your life for hours that you cannot imagine. But guess what? You, your passion will drive you. You will not be counting the hours. You will be so inspired by what you do because it's what you love. The second thing, if you want to find your passion and your purpose, ask those around you. Ask someone who knows you well. 
find that person who knows you well. Maybe they've known you a long time ago. And you say, girl, I've been struggling, you know. It's not midlife crisis. I'm just trying to figure out what it is that I should be doing. What are the things I'm good at? What are my gifts? And hear them tell you without a doubt what those things are. And please don't say, you think so? Because you have been doubting your skills and your gifts all along. The people closest to you, they know you the best. They've seen you in action. They've probably admired you from far or encouraged you from close to get started with that dream, that passion, that gift. They tell you all the time, you are good at this. I like your cakes. It's the best cake I've ever had. I like attending your sessions. I like the way you do my nails. I like, what is it that the people closest to you see that sometimes you often miss? The third thing is get a mentor. Get a mentor. Not somebody you have to pay to tell you what you want to hear a friend, a relative, somebody in position who you can approach. This mentor can be somebody who you can actually get feedback from. I was fortunate to enroll in a program called uh, something to do with gender development. And I traveled to Jamaica for about three weeks. And on our return as a follow-up, we were supposed to get a mentor. And there was a list of um, Belizean men, women in, in leadership who we could choose from. And I was fortunate to be able to have Miss um, Marian Matanab, who is a former CEO, as my mentor. And my first meeting with Miss Matanab, I was all over the place. I like to do this. I don't want to do that. I want. And she says, you know, it sounds to me like you do start a lot of things. But you don't finish a whole lot. Hmm. She said, pick one thing, one thing you would like to finish. And let's work on that. And that is how I published my first short story book, Belizean Storytime, through her mentorship. And I discovered that by finishing one thing, I became a finisher that I would pick up my projects and I would finish them and I would see them through because my mentor was able to identify that even though I was passionate about many things, that it was often a distraction and that I would start many projects and lose focus. And so I was able to start and I was able to finish. Your mentor could also be somebody you emulate. You just look at them and you're like, that's who I want to be like. And you start walking in that purpose. You start doing things to, to draw closer to, you know, draw that gift in you. And it will help you because what you will find is the mentor, the skills they have, it's something that you also have. And you're trying to hone those skills, to grow in those skills. For me, that person was opera. When I was very young, I loved watching opera. I loved how she, you know, was so composed, the way she articulated, you know, I, I, there was something about opera that I loved. I wrote opera letters. She never responded. I sent her emails. When emails came about, I'll check my spam, but I doubt she responded. My goal was to be on an opera show. I was like, I can be, I can be on an opera show. I need to get opera's attention. What do I need to do to get opera's attention? Imagine my disappointment one time when I was looking at opera show and there were two Belizean women. I think they had helped to um, something with American Most Wanted to capture some fugitive and opera invited them. And I was uh, struck. I was like, that's my moment. They're living my dream. I belong on that show. I'm no longer such a huge fan of opera, but that period of having her as a mentor, being inspired by her, has really brought me to that place where I feel 
confident about what where I'm going in terms of my dream. And so those three things I am confident if you do them and there are things you can start doing now in moving one step closer to finding your passion and finding your purpose. Do what you love even if it's on the side. Because I know sometimes we're saying, you know, Ms. Neil, it might sound easy to you, but we have to pay the bills. And so the job we do pays the bills. Do it on the side to start off with. Do it on the side. As a friend, as a friend. And thirdly, get a mentor. Get a mentor, okay? If you think those work, drop it in the chat and say, I'm willing to try. I'm willing to try. You owe it to yourself. And right now I want you to say, you can say it to yourself, you can drop it in the chat. I owe it to myself to no longer be living from payday to payday. I owe it to myself to do more than just survive. We were not made to survive. Dan Maxwell talks about survival. He talks about success and he talks about significance. Our goal in life, our purpose, our passion will lead us to do more than just survive. We can succeed and we can have significance. And what is significance? Significance is not the biggest house on the black or the fanciest car. The significance I'm talking about is adding value to the life of others. By adding value to you, by becoming successful, you can then move to significance where you are able to add value to others. So tell yourself, I deserve, I deserve to live more than from paycheck to paycheck. I deserve this. I owe it to myself to live more than from paycheck to paycheck. I had a conversation with my financial advisor that changed my life. If I were to ask you right now, how much are you worth? Don't tell me and don't start calculating because what most of us do, we start adding up our tangible assets. How much is my home worth, my car? How much do I have in my bank account? Maybe I have a lot of jewelry. And that's how we place a value and net worth on our lives. I said to him, you know what? I think I am worth more dead than alive. I said, because if I die today, I say I leave behind a healthy insurance. My kids get a home. Uh, the younger one, she's taken care of until she's 18 or 21. I say, I think, and then, when he, his response startled me, he felt that, hey, how do you know that within the next three to five years, you can't make more, you can't earn more than what all of those things add up to? More so, what value do you place on those things that you have inside of you, the value you add to others, the things you're able to give back? Are you able to place a value on those? No, they're not tangible. But you, by adding value to the life of others, your life is worth so much more. But the only way you can add value to the life of others is if you are walking in your passion and your purpose, if you are inspired and you're living your best life. Notice we're not talking about accumulating and amassing wealth. We're talking about being happy about the things, being passionate in the pursuit of the things that set your soul on fire. That is truly the life you want to be living. There's this pastor that I love. He wrote The Purpose Driven Life, Rick Warren, and he offered a very thought-provoking quote. And he said, when you die and you get to heaven, God won't ask you, why aren't you a popular evangelist? Why aren't you? Why weren't you? He will ask you, why didn't you become you? Why didn't you become you? Now, what does that mean for you? What is it that you're carrying inside those 
gives those purpose that you are not using. It has to have so much value to others and to you, but it's an unopened gift. It's of no value to anyone at all. Find those gifts. Start living in those gifts, walking in your passion and your purpose. You owe it to yourself. Don't try to be anybody else. Be you. Be you. Be relentless. Be relentless. And don't cop out of opportunities. Erin Mama said, you know, never ever up out of the opportunities that move you in the direction of your dreams, your purpose, your passion. Because it's too hard. Because you don't think you can. You don't have the time. Look for those opportunities. They are there. The doors will open to you if you are ready if you are willing to step one foot forward make that one move in the direction of your dreams what are those dreams are they long forgotten are they died have they died within you it only takes a spark and we hope that this morning that spark has been ignited how hungry are you how you gotta hungry be hungry how hungry are you for those things? My favorite mentor again and motivational speaker, Les Brown, he says, you gotta be hungry. You gotta be hungry. People that are hungry are willing to do the things today others won't do in order to have the things tomorrow others won't have. People that are hungry believe Always strive to get on top in life because it's the bottom that's overcrowded. People that are hungry know if you want to be successful, you must be willing to do the things today others won't do in order to have the things tomorrow others won't have. I didn't do what I'm doing right now because it was hard. How many of you decided not to do something because it was hard? Raise your hands, please. I want you to write this down. If you do what is easy, your life will be hard. Complain, point at your circumstances, give up your power, blame the government, blame the economy. If you do what is easy, your life will be hard. But if you do what is hard, your life will be easy. It's hard to make a radical change in your behavior. It's hard to take ownership. It's hard to swallow the bitter pill that wherever you find yourself, at some point in time, you made an appointment to be there. That's hard. If you do the easy things, your life will be easy. If you do the easy things, your life will be hard. If you do the hard things, your life will be hard easy. Think about it. Are you running from your passion, your purpose, your gifts because it's hard? Your life will not be you easy gotta be if you continue running. Be hungry. Take ownership of your dreams and be willing to bet on yourself. You can succeed if nobody believes in you, but you will never succeed if you do not believe in yourself. And so you must believe in yourself. You must believe you can. The critics will be many. And next, in week three, we'll talk a little more about imposter syndrome as we look at being authentically you and the fact that it takes courage to do so. There will be critics. But guess what? Guess what you say to the critics? You say to the critics, just like Theodore, sorry, Theodore Roosevelt. You remember this all the time when you are faced with criticism. It is not the critic who conks. It is not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done better. The critic belongs to the man who is actually in the arena. And so when others 
look at you and say, how dare you? Or you cannot, or they criticize what you step out to do. Remember, it is not the critic who count. If the person who is offering you criticism or advice is someone who is not living their best life, they're not pursuing their passion and their dream, they're not qualified to give you advice. Don't take advice from anybody that has never stepped foot in the arena. They are not qualified to give you advice. And so you must remember that because indeed it is going to take courage. It also takes grit. It takes grit. Studies after studies have shown that the people who succeeded are those that had grit. A book is even written after it. It's called Grit. Find the book if you can. Guts. Resilience, initiative, and tenacity is what is going to get you through. One of my favorite poems is the poem, If. And there's a little part that says, if you can force your heart and nerve and sinew to serve your turn long after they are gone. And so hold on when there is nothing in you except the will which says to them, hold on. But this is only possible if you're living in your gift, if you're walking in your gift, if you're finding your passion and your purpose, because it is that passion that will propel you forward when you feel like giving up, when everything in you except the will to say, hold on, is what you have to draw on. It is possible. It is possible if you have grit. Lead your life instead of just accepting your life. Lead your life. The only thing standing between you and your goal is the story you keep telling yourself as to why you can't achieve it. What is that story? Let's change that story. Turn that story around. And where you keep telling yourself you can't, say, I can and I will. Because you can. You can make a difference. You can start working in your gift. You can find your purpose and your passion. It takes time, but it is possible. It is very possible. I've added you to the online platform at BC Learn. Once you registered, I've added you. If you have not registered and you would like to be added to the online portion of this course for reinforcement and follow-up, please message me, send me a text message at 670-9564. Ms. Hamilton, can you drop the number in the chat for us, please? 670-9564, message me and say, please add me to the platform. And I will do so because on the platform, what I have placed there for you, I have placed, um, I have placed for you some resource materials that I would like for you to work through, to navigate um, through this so that you, sorry. Okay, let me, let me take you there. Ah, sorry. One second, Murphy's Law. Okay, I have I have placed on the platform for you a questionnaire that I want you to take your time, take about 30 minutes. You don't have to do it all at once. And it's a life purpose questionnaire. And it leads you to thoughtfully examine your life and really the only life worth living is an examined life. Take your time and examine your life and answer these questions thoroughly and deeply and see if it helps you. I'm sure it will help you to come to that place where you are able to start 
working and working on those gifts, talents, and being able to work in your passion and your purpose. So you will be able to work through this questionnaire. If you, you can just keep it for yourself if you like, but there's a place on the platform for you to upload it. If you would like for us to work with you on this, it is something we would be happy to do for you. If you want us to work um, through it, just go ahead and upload the questionnaire. Once you are done working through it, we included a Word document so that you can fill it out and then you can send it back to us. And we will be able to work with you and to provide you with some feedback. What was the last book you read? The last motivational speaker that you listened to? What are the things that you're surrounding yourself with that adds inspiration to your life? There's this book called Die Empty by Todd Henry. And in this book, he decided that what he was going to do was erect a wall, a huge wall. And he called the wall Before I Die, a strange name, right? Before I Die. And on this wall, he left space, lots of slots that said, before I die. And people could come and just fill in and finish writing up what they wanted to do before they died. And he was surprised at how well this wall took off. And it caught on in so many other countries. I'm hoping I can do something like that in Belize. And he noted in his book that many people wrote different things, from the mundane to the serious to some life goals. But what caught his attention was one person who wrote, before I die, I want to live. Before I die, I want to live. And that is very deep and it is profound because many of us live our lives and we die with so much inside of us. We never get to truly experience the fullness of what life has to offer. There is another book which is similar, if you can grab it. It's called The Last Arrow. And it is written by Erwin McManus. And he is somebody who is terminally ill. And he wrote this book, think fully assured that he was going to die soon. And he wanted to share with us his last arrow. And he said, save nothing, save nothing for the next life. When you die, let your quiver be empty and let the last arrow be in your hand. This is only possible if you are using up those arrows. The last arrow. Let save nothing, save nothing for the next life. Let, when you die, let your quiver be empty and let the arrow be in your hands. Being tired is not the same as being empty. If you're empty, it's because you are not living your passion and your purpose. Some days I have to force myself to go to bed. I get up early and I'm the, I'm the last one to bed. Am I rich? Is that why I'm working? No, it's because I'm passionate about what I do. And I believe that we owe it to ourselves and to the world to share the gifts that have been given to us and to do so freely. That is the end of our formal presentation. I thank you so much for joining us. And I hope that this session has added some inspiration to your Monday, your week, and hopefully your year as you get started working on those gifts. We are available to assist you we are, this is what we do. We love interacting. We love working with people to find their passion and their purpose. Next week, Miss Carolyn Hulse will be joining you and she will be talking about returning to your first love in week two. And then in week three, we will be talking about being authentically you and finding the courage to do so. We really look forward 
to interacting with you. Miss Carolyn also has an excellent course along the same line. It's called Setting and Achieving Your Goals. You can find it on the platform as well. And we will be happy to have you register and join us for those exciting course. We have about 10 minutes for question and answers and we would love to hear from you maybe you have a question or a comment that you want to share with us this morning we will be happy to hear from you on um on this if it's a question that we're not able to answer we will definitely uh, get back to you but I, I'm also joined here with, by Miss uh, Janine Hamilton, who is our web developer and my co-partner in this venture. And we are so happy to have you. Uh, who's your favorite um, motivational speaker? Who, which books motivate you? What are things you surround yourself with? Tell us a little about those. Is there anybody who would like to share or anyone who has a question in the next 10 minutes that we have? If you find this material can help you, maybe it can help your staff, your team. We are happy to do a session with them as well for you. We do customized training as, as well. Anybody, you could just go ahead and raise your hand and we'll be um, happy to hear from you. Okay, Tony Robbins. Okay, Jim Ron, Chris Wildner. Okay. Okay, awesome. All right. Yes, Miss uh, Myers, please go ahead. Good morning. I was hoping somebody would say something. I always try not to be the first one or the only one to talk. <laughs> Um, but earlier in, in the first part of your presentation, when you talk about finding that thing and even asking to somebody, um, asking to the close persons what they see in you, what gifts you have, I smile because a couple of my friends and co-workers, they sometimes say some things to me and I'm like, usual, I, and I think it's a Belizean or a Caribbean thing when somebody pays you a compliment, we just kind of like brush it off because you know, we've been socialized to not to take on that because it becomes prideful and whatever. And so I, it's something that recently I've had an opportunity to work on something. And even though the person is giving me the opportunity, I'm still kind of second guessing myself, you know. And so I was really thankful for those nuggets that you shared this morning, because when I think about it, and then I think about this dream that my husband has, and I, I always laugh at it, right? But I, I'm thinking it goes back to society having its own interpretation of what the successful or the it career looks like. And it was a lot of encouragement and a lot of kind of toe, toe stamping <laughs> for me. It was not, not stamping, but your mash me can a little bit this morning, <laughs> but I receive it right. So I just want to say thank you, and I really enjoyed the session and the the um tips this morning. And hopefully, I can move beyond just enjoying it and try to apply. Thank you so much for your feedback, uh, Tashira. And I I do not apologize for stamping your corn if it make if it got you moving, because success does breed success. It's that simple. There is no formula for success, except you keep moving. You keep moving. You decide what it is you want, and your passion will propel you forward. It, it's, it's, there is no formula. There is no secret formula. There is none, except keep moving in the direction. People who succeed will tell you that they have failed. They have failed many times. But what did they do? They kept going because they have a dream in their heart and it keeps them awake at night. And so if there's that thing inside of you, it's just bubbling over. In the year and a half, I've been an entrepreneur, fully 100% an entrepreneur. I have applied for at least two jobs and I will not lie to you. I was like, you know, this is now a work. I have bills to pay Jesus. And you know what is true? 
they didn't hire me. And I thank God they did not hire me because I would not have known. So when things get rough, you don't quit. You push through the rough spots because you believe in your dream. Remember, it doesn't matter if nobody else believes. You are the one who have to believe. People love associating with success, you know. 